Yeah. Yeah. You got it, brother. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm just uh, thinking back there earlier. Just uh, the goodness of God. Just uh, if you if you knew my life story, if you if you knew the the wickedness I've been in in my life, the the things I've done. And now God will just put me up here to share with you guys something He's put on my heart. I just uh, it just it just humbles me that that He would allow me to do this. And uh, I've been in much prayer. And uh, I know Pastor texted me. Uh, I think it was Tuesday night. He said because I planned on doing Sunday night. I already had that plan. He says, can you do Sunday morning and Sunday night? And I'm like, well, sure, why not? What the heck, you know? Uh, and uh, the Lord just gave me a word right there. So uh, that's what I'm going with. So everybody in Acts chapter 5. Amen. I'm going to be skipping around in this chapter a little bit because there's certain scriptures I want to bring out, but they're so far apart. I'm not going to read the whole thing or we'd be here 15 minutes just reading these scriptures. So, uh, I'm going to start in verse 17. It said, it said, Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them into common prison. Now, what was going on? The, you know, the disciples had just, they'd been baptized in the Holy Spirit. They were out preaching the gospel. And the, the Jewish leaders weren't very happy about it. So, you know, they put them into common prison. But as you go on and read the next part of it, the angel of the Lord came and got them out, told them to go into the temple and start preaching Jesus Christ. And they did that. And then we come over to uh, verse 28. He says, saying, and this is the high priest talking to him, saying, did, we, did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Amen. You know, isn't that just like today, Amen. this country, they want to shut down Christians. I don't think they care if you're a Christian, but they don't want you to go out and tell people about Christ. They want you to shut up about it. You ever hear the expression, religion and politics don't mix? Well, I think that's a bunch of hooey. I think religion and politics, I wish there was more Christians in our Congress, in our Senate, that were obeying God and what he wanted to do, and maybe this country wouldn't be, the shape, be in the shape that it's in. Amen. But you know what? God's going to win in the end. You know, isn't it sad that you, you think about it? I know there's people, there's some jobs that say, we don't want you to talk about Jesus Christ. Or you, you're going to get fired. You know, you get dismissed. Or you can be disciplined for it. You know, what would Peter and them say if that told them? You know what they'd say? What he just said here. We ought to obey God rather than men. Amen. You know, there are certain cities that have ordinances that you can't go into that town and solicit. And what they're really saying is they don't want you going door knocking. They don't want you going out and telling people about Jesus. Well, from what I understand about soliciting, I think that means you're trying to sell something to them. I ain't selling nothing. I'm giving it away for free. You can have Christ for nothing. But they've got ordinances against that. What would Peter say? We ought to obey God rather than men. I think sometimes the church is just cowered down in fear of what man can do to them instead of trusting in God Almighty who can deliver them from everything they're going through. Amen. You know, they were put in prison, but the angel of the Lord came and let them out. You know, you may be in prison, but if God don't want you there, he's going to get you out. Amen. You know? And if he does want you there, there's a reason for it to obey him and preach the gospel. Yeah, and but he, after this part, you know, the, the council was trying to figure out what to do. And, a, and one of the uh, Pharisee named Gamaliel, which, by the way, Paul sat under Gamaliel and learned from him. You know, he told him, hey, if this is not of God, it's going to come to nothing. But if it does, if it is of God, you're going to be fighting against God. 
this country's fighting against God. Mm -hmm. you know, the world's fighting against God. Yeah. And you know what? They're, they're going to lose. They're going to lose. We, we don't have to worry about what's going on. I hate, we hate to see the way this country's going. At least I hope you hate to see the way this country's going. <laughs> you know, if, you don't, if you like the way the country's going, man, we'll pray right now. Right. We'll pray right now. But he's saying if, if it's of God, you're going to be fighting against God. And then he says in verse 40, and to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, check this out, rejoicing, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Amen. And daily in the temple and in every house they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. What they just tell them? Don't talk about Jesus. Don't go around telling people about Jesus. We don't want you to do this. What did they do? They obeyed God, and everywhere they went, they were preaching and teaching about Jesus Christ. Amen. Because they were obeying God rather than men, and they were rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for the name of Jesus Christ. And that's what I'm going to talk about today, suffering. I know a lot of people don't want to hear about suffering. You know, we suffer many things in this life. Anybody ever lose a loved one? You suffer through that. It's hard. You know, you ever had uh, job loss? You, that's a hard thing to go through. You ever had uh, just physical ailments, whatever the case may be. We've all suffered in some way or another. But this is talking about suffering for Christ. Let's pray first. Heavenly Father, I ask you now, Lord, to help me, Father. Lord, I can't do this without you, Lord. I need you, Lord, to just, just take me out of the way, Lord. Speak through me, Lord, and, and use these words, Lord, your scriptures, because that's all I've got, Lord, is your scriptures. And just speak to your people today. Open up the hearts, Lord. And just have a mighty move. Just, we just want a mighty move of your Holy Spirit today. And we pray it all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I'll be going through a lot of scriptures. I didn't, I didn't have them put them up on the board like the pastor, you know. So uh, if you guys want to keep along, you know, keep up with me, just write it down and check it out later. Because there's going to be a bunch of them. Well, maybe not a bunch, but there's going to be a few. And when I started thinking about this, because like I said, when I, when I told the pastor I would do it, it just popped up in my heart and mind, suffering, suffering. And I started thinking about some of the reasons why we suffer, some of the reasons for suffering for Christ. And, you know, in Philippians 1.29, it says, for unto you, are you all saved? I'm going to say that. Who's saved? Amen. Everybody in here saved? Amen. Okay. Now, this Paul's talking to you guys right now. He's talking to everybody here that's saved. He says, for unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Yes, sir. God, it's, it's your right. God's giving you the right not only to believe, but he's giving you the right to suffer for him. You know? And you know, our nature doesn't want to hear and don't want to think about suffering. We don't want to. We don't want to suffer. I don't want people, I, you know, I would dread the idea of, you know, if you think about it, back in 2015, I think it was, the Coptic Christians in Egypt. Remember on the video, ISIS had them, those 15 prisoners, 15 or 20, whatever it was. And they just cut their heads right off on video. They just put it all over the internet, you know. I don't relish the idea of going through something like that. I'll just be honest with you. But they knew it was their right to suffer for Christ. One of the wives of the, the person that got head, head with me, she said, I just thank the Lord Jesus that he didn't deny him, that he stayed true to him, Amen. even Amen. unto death. You know, now that's, that's suffering. Yes. And the family that's left behind, you know, you think about that. All they had was Jesus. But that's all they needed was Jesus Christ. Amen. And it's your right as a Christian to suffer for him. 
You know, and in America, we don't we don't see the persecution that most of Christianity sees throughout the world. You know, in America, we were founded upon the Word of God. We were founded upon biblical principles, and for most of our history, Christianity was accepted. Christianity was just the way America was. And people just like, some people weren't saved, you know, they weren't Christians, but they respected it because they knew that was the way this it was in this nation. But we've seen over the last 50, 60 years, you know, prayer was taken out of school. Abortion was legalized. Homosexual marriage was legalized. Everything that God is against, this country is now for. Right. And we see this, we see the tide turning in this nation. And what's going to happen, and we see it now, this nation is going to turn against Christianity. Because if you stand up for what is right, if you stand up for Jesus Christ and the truth of the Word of God, and you say, hey, homosexuality is a sin against God. Abortion is murder. It's murder. That's all. You can't sugarcoat it. It's murder. It's murder in the first degree. You know, taking prayer, you'll never take prayer out of school as long as they have exams. Amen. You know, you'll never take prayer out of school. You can say all you want, but you'll never take it out of school as long as they've got tests coming up. Oh, God, help me get this test. Amen. Amen. And you know what? You can never take God out of anything. You know, God, God rules and reigns. None of this caught him by surprise. He's not up there wringing his hands wondering what to do. He's got it covered. Amen. So, you know, it's your right. To suffer for Christ. Yeah. Amen. Acts 14 22 says, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. This was Paul talking. And he says, We must enter into the kingdom of God through much tribulation. You know, and we go through, like I said earlier, we, we suffer losses in our families. We have financial problems, physical problems. Anybody ever have battles with the devil? You have spiritual battles. Yeah. We're, we're fighting a force in this world. We're fighting evil in this world. And we go through much tribulation. But Paul said you must go through much tribulations to enter into the kingdom of God. Yeah. It's not this health and wealth gospel that you hear nowadays. It's all not a bed of roses as a Christian. Sometimes it gets hard. Sometimes you go through things. People, people make fun of you. People mock you. People, and eventually, persecution is coming. Get ready for persecution for this nation, for Christians. If you, if you stand for Christ, you're going to be persecuted sooner or later in some way. And I believe it's going to be just like it was in the book of Acts. You're going to see people being thrown into prison. You're going to be people, you're going to lose jobs. They're going to threaten you with this, that, and whatever. Because they want you to shut up. They don't want to hear about it. They just want you to confirm and conform to what they want. You know, but we don't answer that. We're not in this kingdom. We're, we're going to another kingdom. You know, we're looking for a city whose builder and maker is God, just like Abraham was. This is not our home. You know, I think sometimes we get too entrenched with America. And I thank God I was, I thank God I was born in this country. This is the greatest country that ever was, that I think will ever be. But this is not my home. And the way it's going, I don't want it to be my home. Because I got one coming. Where there's going to be nothing but joy and peace. Amen. Going to be comfort, leisure. I'll, I'll seek Jesus Christ Amen. face to face. Yes. Amen. And that's what makes it worth the while for all the suffering you go through. It's going to be worth it when you see Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. And he says, enter into the joy of the Lord, thou good and faithful servant. Boy, if he tells me that, I will just run for eternity. I won't have to. I won't be done. Running. I'll be running. That's all I need to hear. You know, we talk about rewards, but he just says, enter in. I'm like, oh my goodness. He's just going to have to stop me from running right there. Because I'm just going to be like, woo, glory, I made it. I made it. I'm here. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's 
good to suffer sometimes. 2 Timothy 3.12 says, Yea, and all who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Yes. Are you living godly? Yes. Are you living godly? You're going to suffer persecution. Yes, now, as a Christian, you can just go with the flow. You can just bypass people. You can just like... And, you know, yeah, they're over there dropping F-bombs, cursing God. But you know what? That's you know, God. Just deal with them, God. And you just walk on. That's right. But if you go up to them and say, hey, you're going to stand before God Almighty one day. And you're going to give account for every time you cursed his name. All them F-bombs you're dropping. All the foul language you're using. Yes. You're going to stand before them. That's right. You're going to suffer persecution. Some of them will just cuss you out, too. Some of them might want to just beat you up. Praise the Lord. But there might be some of them that will listen, that will get right with God. What, what's, it, what's, what's a soul worth to you? Is a soul worth, is somebody getting saved worth you going through a little bit of persecution? Yes, absolutely. Is it? Is it? It's going to happen. Well, we need to live godly in Christ Jesus. You know, like I said, in America right now, we don't suffer persecution like some of the world does. But I believe it's going to get like that. You know, I've been made fun of. I've been mocked at, you know. But, you know, yeah, you crazy, stupid Christian. You don't know what you're talking about, you know. And I will argue with one guy years ago about homosexuality. He just thought that was stupid. He didn't want to hear what the Bible said. But that's all right. Because I stood for what God wanted. And that's what matters. That's what matters. Because you know what? If Jesus Christ was willing to go to the cross and die for me, the least, the least I can do is live for him. Amen. That's the least I can do is live for him. Because he died for me. If I'd have been the only one there that needed to be saved, he would have died for me. So I should live for him willingly and say, Lord, whatever, whatever. I've learned over the years that life is short, you know. Life is short. We're all, you know what? Every one of you in here, if the Lord don't come back, you're going to die. Yep. That's right. From this day on, you're, you're on a road to death. Yep. Let's make the most of it for Jesus. Amen. Let's live godly in Christ Jesus and do what he wants. Yes. And bring on the persecution if that's what happens. It don't matter. We're going to a kingdom where we won't have to worry about that. Amen. And everyone who isn't saved, they're going to a place where they're going to suffer eternal torment. While we have peace and joy, they have nothing, none of that. They're going to be in torment. They're going to be in agony. They're going to be crying out for mercy where there be no mercy. And we've got the Lord now. That's all that matters. That's all that matters is Jesus Christ. That's all that matters in his life is him. He says in 1 Peter 2.20, he says in 2.20 and 2.21, For what glory is it when ye are buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently. You ever been buffeted for your faults when you mess up? You, know, you take that and say, yep. I, if, well, if you're a man or a true man or woman of God, you go, yes, I did. Some people never want to admit their mistakes. They never want to say they were wrong. But you know what? If you do, and you take it patient, you should take it patiently. Yes, I blew it. Then he says, but if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. Amen. God accepts that. If you're, if you're living for him and you get persecuted for it, that's acceptable. And you take it patiently and say, that's what happens. It's all in your hands, God. That's acceptable with God. Amen. He says in the next verse, For even hereunto ye were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Do you want to follow Christ? Amen. Then we should, be, we should be living for him, and if we suffer for him, we're following him. He was our example. What did he do when people confronted him? He stood for the truth. He didn't sugarcoat it. He, didn't, he called Pharisees, he called them whitewashed tombs. He called them a den of vipers. You know, when people came to him for, for salvation, he would, the woman at the well, you know, what about your husband? Well, I ain't got no husband. See, so y'all know you had five of them. 
but he saved her anyway. Because he, he, he always told the truth. He always did what God wanted him to do. And look, and you know what? The Bible says he went around doing good. He didn't do nothing wrong. He didn't do no evil. And he got hung on a cross. That's our example. And if we're going to follow Christ, we need to follow his example and stand for the truth Amen. and speak the truth. Speak the truth and love the people. Don't sugarcoat it with them. Just tell them the truth and let God handle it. You know, and whatever happens will happen. It says in 1 Peter 4, 12, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, in verse 13, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings. When you suffer for Christ, you're being, you're being a partaker of his sufferings. You're, you're getting a little taste of what he went through. And, you know, we all say we want to know Christ. We want to know Christ. Well, probably the best way you'll ever know him is through your suffering. Because yes, that's what his life was about, was suffering. And you'll be partakers of his sufferings. You know? And there's, it, it, it's, 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 strange, it's strange when you think about it that when you suffer, you think, man, Christ went through so much more. And I understand just a little bit of it, a little bit better of what he went through because now you've suffered for him and become a partaker of his sufferings. Uh, where was I? That, that, then it goes, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. The next verse says, if you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. Amen. You know, if, if you're being persecuted and being reproached by people for God, the spirit of God is resting upon you because he's leading you and guiding you and directing you in what you should say, what you should speak, how you should be in this world. And he's, he's using you. And if you're reproached, be happy about it because the Spirit of God is resting. Don't you want the Spirit of God to rest upon you, Amen. to use you for His glory? Yes. And He uses us in many different ways besides going through, you know, us to be in suffering, you know, to go through suffering. But that's one of the ways He leads us and guides us. And, you know, he'll, you think about it. Jesus, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 4 that... The Spirit of God led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Yes. You know, sometimes the Spirit of God will lead us into things that we don't really want to go to. But if he's leading us, that means he's resting upon us. He's using us for God's glory. So, you know, whatever happens, it says, happy are ye. And then he says, for the spirit of glory of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. People will speak evil of God because of your stand for him. But because of your stand for him, you are glorifying him. Yeah. And I believe as Christians, we, we should want to glorify God. Amen. You know, if you don't want to glorify God, there's something wrong. There's something wrong, and we need to be people of God that want to give Him glory no matter the cost to us. You know, we use the, the scripture in Revelation where it says they were made overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. But the next verse says, and they counted not their lives dear unto their selves. They didn't care about their lives because they had the word of God and they had the word of their testimony, the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And they didn't care what happened to them because they knew, we know, when we leave this life, then we truly have life. And that's what's, that's what's great about it. You know? Can you just imagine if you get, if you get persecuted, if you get killed for Christ, you're just going from this sickening world that we're in and you're going into the better world, the best Amen. world. Best you know? Thank you, Lord. I say, take me now. Amen. Take me. Come, you know, take me now. You know? Not only get out of this world, but just to see Jesus. 
Cast, do you want to see Jesus? Oh, yes, I mean, do you all want to see Jesus in all his glory? Have you ever thought about just seeing him in his glory <laughs> when you get there? Are, are you going to, I, I can only imagine that, you know, just standing there like, looking at me. He's saying, he's saying, well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. Well done. Can you imagine that? The king of glory saying something like that to somebody like me. To somebody like us. Wouldn't that be awesome? Amen. That, that should make it worth our what? That should just make everything worth it. Whatever we got to do, whatever he says, just do it. And leave the rest with him. Amen. Now, after that, I thought about, you know, what happens through suffering? What was the results of suffering now? You know, in James chapter 1 and verse 2 and 3, and verse 2 and 3, it says, My brother, count all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Yes. You, you always hear people never pray for patience. Because, you know, the Bible says tribulation works patience. That's my next verse, by the way. But you know what? You're going to go through it anyway. Because it works patience. That word patience means endurance. It means you endure under the pressure of the circumstances that you're in. And the Bible says, he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. So we need to endure. And I believe as Christians, if you're a true Christian, you will endure because the Spirit of God is leading you through all this life, through all these trials, and you're, you're becoming patient. You're enduring these things. And as you endure one and the next one comes, you can remember what you've been through. And you can go through the next one because you've seen God move in every circumstance in your life, and you know He's got you covered. Amen. And He wants us to be there. God, God, has worked, God has worked all this out so that we have every advantage to get to heaven. Amen. He's planned it out that, hey, my son died for you. My spirit lives in you. He's leading you and guiding you and directing you. And all you got to do is follow. Amen. And you'll be there. Amen. You know, people talk about, well, you can be saved and lose it or be eternally secure or whatever. Just follow Jesus. Amen. So don't worry about that. If you follow Jesus Christ, you will make it to the gates of glory. You'll be in heaven because he's not going to lead you, lead you down a path of wickedness down to hell. He's going to lead you to glory. Yeah. So don't worry about whether you're going to be saved or going to lose it or whatever the case may be. Just follow him. Amen. That's all you got to do. Follow him. Romans 5, 3 says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Verse 14, the next verse 4 says, in patience and experience and experience hope. That word experience means you've been tried and you've been approved. You passed the test, Amen. you've been approved, and now you're more, now you have hope. We have, that word hope means it's a confident expectation of good. You know through your past trials that you're going to come through the next one because God got you through that one. And now you have hope that when the next one comes, he's going to get you through it Amen. because he always does. You know what else suffering does? I'll tell you one thing it'll do. It'll drive you down to your knees. It'll be like, God, I need your help. God, I need you to move. God, I need you to show me what to do in this situation. I don't know how to handle this, God. You become dependent on Him. Yes. You lean on Him. When things are good, you, you tend to put God to the side. Anybody ever put God to the side when things are good? Besides me, am I the only one? Yeah. But when, you, when things are rough, you're, you're on your knees. You're seeking God. You're wanting God. God, you need His help. You know, he wants us to be like that. We need to be like little children dependent on Him as our Father. Because that's what we are. To Him, we're just little children. He's our Father, and we need to be dependent upon Him and trust in Him and follow Him and have Him help us. Because I don't know about you guys, but I need help. Amen. I need help. I need His strength. I need His power. I need His wisdom. I need everything He's got. Because I can't do it on my... You cannot live this life on your own as a Christian. 
You need God Almighty. You need Jesus Christ and you need the Spirit of God all working in you and through you. That's what we need. And that's part of the suffering so that it will keep us dependent upon Him. When you read through the book of Acts, when the apostles, when they would preach and they'd be thrown in prison or whatever, they would start seeking God. They were always seeking God because they knew they needed Him. One scripture in there, I can't remember what it was, but they were just gotten out of prison again and they just asked God to fill them with their spirit again so they could go out and preach more of the gospel. Hallelujah. Here they went through one trial and they say, Lord, fill me up again so I can go out and preach some more and suffer whatever's got to be done. Well, I'll tell you what, we don't pray like that, do we? We don't pray, God, bring on the suffering. God, just fill us with your spirit so we can live a godly life so that we can preach the gospel and not care what anybody thinks. Maybe we need to start praying like that. Maybe if we'd been praying like that 60, 70 years ago, this country wouldn't be in the mess that it's in. You know, I don't blame the government for this country's mess. I blame the church. They've let down. Have we let down? Are we letting down as a church here? I'm not talking about the whole church. I'm talking about us. Are we letting down as a church? Are we out spreading the gospel? Are we standing for God Almighty? I want you all to think about that today. Seriously, think about that. Are you standing for God Almighty? I tell you what, I'll be honest, I don't always stand. I don't. I fall. I fail God. And I'm just being honest with you. But I don't want to be. I want to be a Christian who just loves God with everything I got. Amen. That's my prayer. I just want to love him. And serving. It's the least he deserves. It's the least he deserves. First uh, Peter chapter 1, verse 7 says that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire. You know they you know how they purify gold? They put it in that smelting pot and they turn up the fire, they keep turning up the heat. And the dross rises up to the top and they scrape it off so the gold becomes pure. That's what God does with suffering, with trials in your life. He's purifying you because to God, your faith is much more precious than gold. You know what God thinks of gold? God don't think much of gold. You know why? Because heaven is paved with the street of gold. You know, people desire, you ever see commercials nowadays? Buy gold. You need to invest in gold. The economy's going to be crashing. The stock market's falling. You need to invest in gold. If you had a gold coin, where can you uh, go spend it? If you had a gold bar, where can you go spend it at? If, if the dollar is going to fall and be worthless, where can you cash in a gold bar at to go get some money so you can use it? I've always wondered things like that. But they say, buy gold, buy gold. God says, I got a street made of gold. This gold ain't nothing down here. This gold ain't nothing. This money ain't nothing down here. It's just paper. It's, going to, it's just green paper. That's all money is, green paper. But he says, it's much more precious than a gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found under praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Don't you want your faith to be found in the glory and honor and praise when you stand before Jesus? Amen. Don't you want him to say, you stood the test, your faith was strong in me, you, you fought the fight, you kept the faith, you run your course like Paul said. Don't you want the Lord to do that? That's why. That's why you go through trials. He's refining you. He's sanctifying you. He's making you more like Jesus every time you go through things in your life. That's why we go through things in your life. Next time you're going through a trial, don't ask God, why God, why? Ask him, God, what are you wanting to want to teach me through this? What are you trying to show me, God? What's the, what's the reason for this? Because I know you have a reason. You know, A lot of Christianity nowadays, they think God's just going to make everything good for you. Everything's smooth. 
You know, no problems. Be like a bed of roses. Well, every time I've seen roses, there's always a thorn in there with them roses. You know, I don't want to be in a bed of roses. I don't like thorns. But God, God puts you through things. Because he's trying to grow you up. He wants us to grow up in him to be who he wants us to be. And that's what it's all about. Now, you know, we, we talked about the results of suffering, the reasons for sufferings. There's also rewards for suffering. Matthew 5.11 says, and 5.12 says, this is Jesus talking, says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. He says, rejoice. Isn't it amazing? The Bible, when it says you're going through all these things, like we said in James, and he said, count it all joy. Jesus says, rejoice when you, you know, the Bible's a paradox almost. You know, you go through terrible times and he's telling you just rejoice. Be exceedingly glad. Count it all joy when you're going through these things. Because he says, rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets which were before you. Do, you re do we really believe that there's a reward in heaven? For us, for what, when we go through these things, Amen. Do you? Yes. Then are we are we living the way we should live? Because we know, you know, I don't want us to get the mindset that well, give and to get, so to speak. But do we really believe that what God has said that there's a reward for us? Yes. That should just that should make us want to just live for Him because we know there's something better coming. There's always something better coming. He says, for so they persecuted the prophets which were before you. Anybody heard of a book called Fox's Book of Martyrs? Mm -hmm. You ought to get it sometime. Yep. It, it, it talks about all the martyrs from when the church began to up to now. And some of them, I tell you what, some of them were burned at the stake. You know, in Rome, during Paul's time, they would take Christians and they would put them in wax and they would burn them as, as lights through the night to light up the streets. I think, yeah, I think, you know. Yeah, we, we got it so hard over here. Come here. We got it so hard in America. Poor, poor, pitiful me. Somebody made fun of me because I told them about Jesus. Oh, Lord, why are you letting me go through this? We, we don't expect. We haven't resisted unto blood, as the book of Hebrews said. It's going to happen someday. It can happen. He says in Romans 8, 17 says, And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, or joint heirs with Christ. You know, what's, what's Christ receive? He receives everything, don't he? We're joint heirs with him. We're joint heirs. We, we receive everything he receives. He says, uh, If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. You know, when we suffer with him, we're going to be glorified with him. We're going to share in his glory. We're going to share the throne with him. Uh, the Second Timothy 2.12 says, If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Amen. Yeah. We'll, we will reign. You know what somebody does who reigns? They're in charge. You know, a couple weeks ago, King Charles... Became king of England, you know. He didn't have to suffer for nothing. He lived a life of luxury his whole life. He was born with the so-called silver spoon in his mouth, you know. He had everything the world could give him. No suffering, no nothing. All he had to do was wait for the queen to die. And then he was next in line to be the king. But when we suffer, if we suffer for him, the Bible says... We shall also reign with him. Right. The Bible says that we are kings and priests of God Almighty. And as priests, we need to be interceding for people. We need to be sacrificing for people. There's many people in the church that we need to intercede for. There's many people in the world who are lost that we need to intercede for and be that priest. But we're also going to reign with him. You know, he's coming back for the thousand year reign on earth and, and we're going to be there with him, reigning with him. And do we deserve any of that? No. 
We don't deserve none of that. But he gives us all of this. So many benefits to knowing Christ, to living for him. It's worth it all in the end. The next part of that verse says, though, if we deny him, he will also deny us. You know, I pray none of us denies him. I can only imagine Peter when he denied the Lord three times. You know, we talk about old Peter, you know, got out of the boat and sank, denied the Lord three times. The Bible says he went out and wept bitterly because he knew he denied the Lord. But the Lord in his grace and mercy on the day of Pentecost, Peter preached the first sermon. 3,000 people got saved. A few days later, 5,000 people got saved under his preaching. You know, God has mercy for us. Amen. If, if we fail him, if there's some time in your life you deny him and you repent, he'll show you mercy. Yes. But if you deny him and never come back, you never make things right, if you deny him, he's going to deny you. I, can you imagine when something, when the Bible says, I think it's in Matthew, it says, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Wouldn't it be terrible your whole life, you think you're a Christian, and then you stand before him and he says, I never knew you. Because you had denied him, with, you, 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 used his, you used him as a, in name only, but your life didn't show it. You denied him with your life. You may never have said, no, I don't believe in Jesus. No, I don't have nothing to do with Jesus. But your life just showed that you had really nothing to do with Jesus. You may have come to church, but the rest of the week, you just live like the rest of the world. That's denying him. I pray that we don't deny him in our day. Because you know what? It's easy to come to church to raise your hands, to shout hallelujah, to worship the Lord. It's easy to come in here and do this because we're with like-minded people that want to do the same thing. But what happens when people start to make fun of you? Kyle, what would happen if somebody came up to you and said, if you don't deny Jesus Christ, I'm going to shoot your daughter in the head. Tough, ain't it? Tough. Sometimes that may be the cost. That girl in Columbine High School years back, they told her, deny God or we're going to shoot you. She said, no, I'll never deny him. So they shot her and killed her right on the spot. You know? You know? That's sometimes that's the cost of following Jesus Christ. Jesus told people to count the cost before you start this walk. See, that's the problem with churches. They don't tell people there's a cost to following Christ. They just want to get them saved, and then they don't want to tell them and disciple them and say, hey, you can expect to be mocked. You can expect to be made fun of. You can expect to be persecuted because G you know, you're not greater than Jesus. They persecuted him. They're going to persecute you. But people don't want to hear that. The churches don't want to tell people that. But that's the cost of following Christ sometimes. Like I said, here in America, we don't know that. Because we work, we've been a Christian nation. We've, this nation has accepted Christianity most of its history, but it's getting away. And I tell people all the time, they probably get tired of hearing me. It's coming. Persecution is coming. This, this world is winding up. If you're here on Wednesday night when we're studying the book of Revelation, you can see everything coming together. You know, the Antichrist, he's out there. I believe he's out there somewhere in the world right now. The one world government's forming. You know, you, you see that going on in this world. Biden wants this, everybody wants this, this country, they want this country destroyed. Because yep. this country is the only beacon of light that's in, that's in the world right now. And that light's fading away. Yes, you know, COVID was nothing more than trying to shut the church down. Trying to shut up Christians. That's what the world wants, to shut up Christians and get rid of us. But we've got to be that light in this world. We've got to be the salt of the earth like Jesus said we were. But there's going to be no hope. 
You know, I believe there's, I, I personally believe this country's going to go down anyway, but I think we can slow the progression a little bit if we just stand for Jesus Christ. Because as long as we're here, there's still people out there who need to be saved. And that's why we're here, Cass. That's why we're here. It's for people to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and to be saved. That's the only reason the Lord hasn't come back yet. There's some more people out there. There's some more that's going to be coming to him. Yeah. You might be one that can lead some. You might be the one that leads that last person to Christ. Amen. Then the trumpet sounds and you go home. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah. You, you, you led the last one to the Lord and now it's time to go home. Hallelujah. That might give you an incentive to just go out and witness to more people, huh? Because you never know. Right. You, somebody's got to lead that last one to the Lord. Why not me? Why not you? I know it's not been a shout the house down kind of message, but this is what the Lord laid on my heart. And you know, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you that I assume everybody here is saved, but I don't know everybody's heart. And if you don't know the Lord, the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's right, Amen. And there's two things about that verse. First, you've sinned, which people don't think sin is a big deal anymore. But the thing is, it's who you sinned against. You've sinned against a holy, righteous God who hates sin, who will punish sin, who will punish you if you don't get right with him. But because of his love and his grace and his mercy, he gave his son for you so that you wouldn't have to face the wrath and judgment of God because he poured out his wrath and judgment on his son so you wouldn't have to face it. That's right. So if you don't know the Lord, I implore you, I beg you, come seek the Lord today. Yes. Seek him while he may be found. Because right now, we're in an age right now where there's an open door for people to be saved. But there's coming, just like in Noah's Ark, eventually God is going to shut that door and nobody's going to get in. The time is now. The Bible says today if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Amen. So I thank you for your time.